Welcome back to the vlog, Poker Beast. Today is a special edition of the vlog, and that's because I'm buying into the 2 5 game with a max buy in $1,000 of my own money put down on the table. Let's go for a ride. I fold away a few hands and I pick up Ace King offsuit in middle position. It folds around to me, and I have no idea what the standard open is at this 2 5 table or a 2 5 table in general. I decide to go a little bigger, $35. I'm trying to fold out most of the holdings except for maybe one or two players. It folds around to the cutoff who decides to make the call. And then also the straddle on the button decides to come along as well. We're going three ways to the flop with $111 in the pot. The dealer puts out king 5-5. Five, five. I've hit my top pair. I have the best kicker. It's a very dry board. I have no idea how much to bet, but I'm going to continue betting. I decide on $65. It's about a half size pot bet. And the cutoff decides to fold and the button who remembered straddled decides to come along. We're going heads up to the turn with $241 in the pot, and man, these two five pots get big fast. The dealer puts out the turn, it's the queen of diamonds, bringing in possible backdoor straight and flush draws. I decide to slow down a little bit, check to my opponent, and he decides he's gonna bet and bet big. $175. I am not used to these sizings at all, but I don't see any way that I can fold my ace king. It's just too strong, and even though the $175 makes me uncomfortable, I'm gonna make the call. There's already $591 in the pot, and the dealer puts out the jack of clubs. I am going to continue checking to my opponent, hoping that he checks back, but he doesn't. He rips it all in. It's a pot size bet, $585. The pot's $1,175, and if I call, it's gonna be a whopping $1,761. I'm thinking about what I could beat, and the answer is basically nothing. I can beat a bluff. Now let's just break down the hand a little bit. He was on the straddle on the button, so he literally could have any two cards. He's just called on the flop. I don't see a reason why he would call on the flop with nothing. I don't think he's trying to set up a bluff from the beginning. When the turn comes to the queen, he bet $175. I made the call, and now he's doing a really large shove. The most obvious thing is that he has a five in his hand, but I think that with a combination of the fact that these bets are way too big for me, and so what I am thinking about is all the money I've already invested in the pot, and I'm still in the 1-3 mindset where it takes a long time to make 350 bucks back in a 1-3 game. What I don't understand is that in a 2-5 game, it's just all amplified, so I can make that money back pretty quickly, just even with one hand. So I get a little caught up in this thought process, and I decide that I am actually going to call. I'm sure you all already know what's going to happen. It was a terrible call. He flips over five deuce offsuit. The button's special. And now I'm shipping so much money, I don't even know what the hell is going on. It's my first hand that I've played at this 2-5 game, and I've already lost about $800. It's just really frustrating to go back over the hand and realize that he probably thought that I had some big face cards. And so at the very least, I had ace-king, but I could easily have king-queen, king-jack. He just really saw that my hand was face up, and he knew that if he shoved on me, I'd have a hard time getting away, which I did. So we're already in deep, but I'm not going to let that deter me. I decide to top back off to 1,000. I buy in for 800 more. I know that I haven't posted frequently over this past week, and the reason is because I'm going to Vegas for a week, and I'm going to play in some big tournaments, so I've really been dedicating a lot of my time that I would be to editing the vlog to studying some multi-table tournaments, and hopefully I have some success. The next hand I look at is 810 of diamonds, the under the gun player limps, and I decide I'm going to bump it up. Let's make it $20. It folds around to the hijack, who decides on a weird bet. He decides on a min raise. I'm not too used to that. Usually it represents a lot of strength. But when it folds back around to me, I'm going to make the call. It's only $20 more into a $72 pot. The dealer puts out queen deuce eight. I have middle pair and a backdoor flush draw. I decide I'm going to check it over to my opponent, most likely making the call. He bets $55, and I do indeed call. We're going to the turn, heads up with $192 in the pot, and the dealer puts out the eight of hearts. It's a beautiful card. I can assume that I'm in the front now. And I decide to check it to my opponent, hoping that he continues to bet. He doesn't. He checks behind. When the river comes out the ace of diamonds, I'm thinking that maybe if my opponent whiffed on the previous streets, maybe he hit his ace and he'll put in a bet. So I check to him again, and he checks back. We're going to showdown. He shows pocket jacks, and I flip over my hand, and I'm scooping a $202 pot. I definitely lost out on some value there, but it's just so awkward to lead out when you're out of position. I'm getting some confidence back. I have $1,137 on my stack when I look down at pocket threes in the low jack. The middle position player limps. I decide to limp. 
the cutoff limps, and the button bumps it up to $35. The small blind calls, the big blind calls, the middle position player calls, I'm going to make the call, and the cutoff calls as well. We're going to the flop six ways with $180 in the pot. The dealer puts out 773, an absolutely beautiful flop. I flop a full house, and with six players in the hand, hopefully someone wants to gamble. It checks around to the original razor, and he bets 25. The small blind thinks about it for a moment, and he decides, 25 bucks, I'll make the call. The middle position makes the call, and I think it's too early for me to bump it up, so I just make the call as well. The cutoff folds, and so we're going four ways to the flop. Once again, $310 in this pot, and the dealer puts out the two of spades. It's a safe card, and this time, the small blind leads out $100. It folds around to me. The small blind only has about $375 left. I don't want to inflate this pot too much. The board is so safe. I make the call, hoping to entice the button, who's been raising this whole hand in, and indeed, he decides to make the call. We're going three ways to the river with $610 in the pot. I'm still having a hard time wrapping my head around this, but all I know is I like it. The river comes out the six of hearts. It's a little scary. Seven six is definitely a playable hand. The small blind leads out again for $100, and this time I make my move. $500, bringing the pot to 12.10. The button finally makes the fold, and the small blind goes all in for his remaining $217. I flip over my hand, clinching my you-know-what. I need to win this pot. I'm in for a lot of money. My opponent flips over a seven offsuit, and I'm scooping this one a $1,260 pot. Thank goodness. Just like that, I have $1,962 in my stack. It's really incredible. I found a secret. If you want to buy in more than the $1,000 cap, just lose $800 of it right away, and then win $800 of it back. All of a sudden, you're in for $1,800 of your own money. I don't know if that makes any sense, but goodness gracious, I'm glad that I didn't have to wait too long to get that money back. If you're going to drop a like on a video, this is the one to do it. This is an intense session for me. Look at all those chips. The next hand I get is ace four spades. I'm on the big blind. The middle position player who min raised me earlier bumps it up to 20 and the button makes the call. I'm gonna get a little wild here. This is in my three bet range. I've never three bet in a two five game. I think this is the perfect time to do it. I decide I'm gonna bump it up to $100. Things get intense quickly at these games. It's crazy throwing four green chips in the middle of the pot and having so many green chips all around the table. The middle position thinks about it, and he decides to make the call. The button folds away. We're going heads up to the flop with $227 in the pot, and the dealer puts out king deuce three. This is actually a pretty good flop. I have a backdoor nut flush draw, and a five gives me a straight. I'm going to continue representing strength. I grab six green chips and throw in a bet of $150. I'll tell you what, one, three, two, five. It's not that big of a difference, it seems, but these games seem to be filled with people that either A, like to gamble more, or B, have a lot more money. I've seen multiple players go broke for $1,000 and then instantly re rebuy once or twice for $1,000 more. I don't know if the level of play is all that much greater, but I definitely think that there's probably a lot more money to be made at these stakes if I'm able to get an edge. My opponent thinks about it for a while, but then he decides on a fold. I'm scooping a pot, and now I'm over $2,000 in chips. I'm in the green. I'm back even. My mentality is great. Although I do have a lot of my own money on the table, I calm down a little bit and I fold away a bunch of hands. I'm waiting for the right spot to put my money in, knowing that these pots get big and I don't have to force anything. The next time I pick up is pocket queens in middle position, under the gun folds, and I open the action for $20. The small blind makes the call and the big blind makes the call. I'm starting to think $20 is maybe a little too small for this game, especially in an early position. We're going three ways to the flop with $60 in the pot and the dealer puts out king jack 10 two clubs it's not the best flop for me although i do have a lot of equity if an ace or a nine comes i'm going to continue betting i think my hand's strong enough to i bet 40 dollars the small blind makes the call and the big blind folds we're going to the turn heads up with 140 dollars in the pot the turn is the ace of spades i make my straight and i have most of the queens i'm going to continue betting but small i bet half pot 75 dollars and my opponent folds pretty quickly. Scooping another pot. Once again, this session's going well, but I've really messed it up with that terrible call on the river. It seems like any time I have to go into the tank on the river for a call, I'm usually behind and I should just fold. I have $2,174 in my stack. I do a strategic seat change to the left of the player who's bought in three or four times, and I look down at pocket tens. The player to my right, who I just talked about, bumps it up to $35, and with my pocket tens and so many players to act behind me, I'm gonna go ahead and bump it up 
put in a three bet. You're going to be proud of me. This is not something I would have done with tens at the beginning of this vlog, but I bump it up to $85. I get exactly what I want. It folds around and the player who originally raised makes the call. We're going heads up to the flop with $177 in the pot. I have the superior position and also probably the superior hand. The dealer puts out the flop, 10 queen nine. I hit my set. There are flushes and straight draws with the possible straight already being made. My opponent checks to me and I'm gonna put out a bet to try to make him pay to play $125. It's kind of fun throwing in these green chips. I've already mentioned it, but this whole session is just kind of a wild ride for me. My opponent doesn't want to call. He doesn't want to fold. Instead, he decides to rip it all in for his remaining $300. There's no way I'm getting away from this hand, especially for this cheap price. I'm gonna make the call and let's see the run out. The turn is the six of spades, beautiful. The river not so much, it's the ace of clubs. I'm hoping that he didn't get there but he flips over pocket sevens. I'm scooping this one, and little did I know, I was way ahead the whole time. It feels great, and I'm just adding to my stack after starting off with such a bad hand and such a big deficit. Let's keep the good times rolling. An orbit later, I look down at ace king of spades and the cutoff, the middle position player limps, and the hijack to my right bumps up to $20. I just three bet him earlier, let's do it again, $75. It folds around to the hijack who decides to make the call. We're going heads up to the flop with $162 in the pot and the dealer puts out the 10 queen five, one spade. I have a straight draw, backdoor nut flush draw and two overs. When it checks to me, I'm gonna continue betting. I make it $100. He thinks about it for a little bit and makes the fold. I haven't lost a single hand since that previous ace king. Lady Luck's on my side and I have really gotten quite a few chips now, $2,566. I fold a bunch until I finally look down at a decent hand, ace jack of spades. I'm in the middle position. The under the gun player calls, the middle position player bumps it up, and I make the call. I could three bet here, but I think this is just a safe call. The low jack, the button, and the big blind all make the call. We're headed to the flop, five ways with $82 in the pot, and the dealer puts out three six king, one spade. The middle position player decides to C bet, $60. I think that my hand is good enough con to continue. I have a backdoor nut flush draw, backdoor straight draw, one over. I make the call, and the low jack and the button make the call as well. We're headed to the turn four ways with $322 in the pot, and the dealer puts out the jack of diamonds. I hit a pair, but with four players in the hand, it's probably not good. The middle position player bets $100. I would have much preferred a spade, an ace, or maybe like a queen or a 10. I decide I'm gonna go ahead and let this one go. I play a few more hands, folding on the flop when I don't get anything. Nothing really interesting worth going over, but I decide I've done a great job. I've had a comeback session, and it being my first 2-5 game, let's just book the win. Whenever I feel like leaving, I do. Plus, in and out closes in 30 minutes, and I really want a double-double with some fries like well. I take my chips to the counter to trade them in for cold hard cash. I'm in for $1,800, out for $2,400, with a profit of $600. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and wish me luck in these tournaments in Vegas. Kato out.